Hello and welcome. We're coming to you from the sidelines of the Mint India Investment Summit 2022, an in-person event that Mint has done after almost a couple of years. And I'm joined by Mr. Swaroop Mohanty uh, from Mirai, uh, a fund that you know is almost a household name now. You know, as far as retail investors are concerned. Uh, so your inputs, you know, would be very valuable, uh, you know, for us to understand how to make sense of the recent correction that we have been seeing in the market. Are investors a little spooked? How should they, you know, uh, how, how should they read this correction? First of all, thank you for calling us a household <laughs> a name. Coming from South Korea, it's a huge thing for us. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, when you look at the investor and, and the way the investor behavior has been carrying on over the last decade, I think a lot changed post demonetization. And that's when we saw the significant change from fixed assets to financial assets. And, and you cannot take away the fact that the fixed income rates have been going down and hence the gradual shift to say the equity markets mm -hmm. and then what's what's been the best part about uh, the behavior in the last four or five years in particular I can't say that uh, for sure for the lump sum investor but the significant change in the behavior of the same investor through the SIP route has been a joy to watch and then in spite of markets going down or coming up they have stayed put not only have they stayed put they've continued to add money this gives them a very different flavor of this asset class called liquidity, which is the growth asset going forward because they remain invested. They catch an ups and downs of the market, which is what we call the rupee, cup, uh, you know, rupee cost averaging. And they participate in the growth story of India. And, and it's so good to see that happening and, and uh, the increase of folio accounts on a daily basis for the industry is, is testament to the fact that the investor behavior, especially for financial assets, is on the rise. And I see that growing because the demography of the country itself is changing to the young and they will behave totally different to the way the previous investors used to behave. Right. Uh, you know, speaking of the recent correction again and the recent volatility, have you seen that impacting inflows into mutual funds or is that likely to uh, you know, have an impact going forward? Are people being speculative? See, I can speak of it on two parts. One from the Miri Asset perspective. Uh, we have not seen outflows in our funds for the last eight years. I mean, net outflows I'm talking about. So we've been net sales positive on a monthly basis for the last seven, eight years. Just shows that if the investment experience is good, the investor comes back and rewards you. And we build our business completely on an investment experience for each of our investors. Broadly, if you look at the industry also, it's been a, a similar sort of trend. And I spoke about the SIP investment earlier. Uh, it's now 12, 13,000 crores per month and that seems to be growing every month. So uh, when markets fall, uh, it used to be theory in earlier, buy at the dips, uh, but people seem to be practicing it more often than not now. You know, when you look at the investors of the country, and, and please understand that as the young start growing, coming into the market, uh, they go digital and, and the digital uh, you know, penetration of the country has just grown and the COVID has seen a spike on that and, and that's helping the industry you know, receive inflows in a far more structured and penetrated manner than it was earlier. So all, all uh, credit to the way they have risen to this entire, uh, what can I say, pandemic. And when you put investors in a pandemic kind of a situation where people face uh, death, uh, there is a flight to safety and when there is a flight to safety there is a basic you know convergence towards more savings more investment so the industry has benefited from that right you know we've also been seeing FII outflows uh, you know for some time now uh, when do you see that changing or reversing and is domestic institutional you know are domestic institutional investors you know able to support the market in this phase then so I think the, the change in the structural change in the last two, three years has been the domestic flows. And with consistent domestic flows, we as mutual funds are becoming significant in controlling the market movement too. And, and today with our robust inflows along with our SIP book, we are standing tall in the market. And, and uh, you know, as, as we speak on a daily basis, we are buyers and, and uh, the FIS can come in and go as per their diktat or as per their mandate. I think uh, it will be wrong to take a negative call on India. I keep on saying that, you know, you sell India at your own risk. Uh, this is a country to be uh, invested in. And especially post-COVID, a lot has changed for our country. Uh, and, and it's advantage India. So, so if you don't participate in the market, 
uh, the risk of investing is far, not investing is far higher i feel and we've heard that you know uh, uh, enough times already in this summit so you know i think it's a point worth emphasizing um so you know lastly to the investor and also you know uh, you know from your point of view what do you how do you read into the russia ukraine tensions right now you know uh, if this protracts what are the key uh, you know headwinds that you know the world and the economy uh, you know uh, might face clearly what has happened till now especially was not projected i mean that we will be in in a war like situation in this yeah. time and age is was unheard of we had always thought that you know the real war will not happen but it's happening as we speak and and there is no clear cut conclusion uh, of the war uh, at this moment so one has to really watch the space is the impact is there i think uh, more than the russia or uh, ukraine war i would really look at the inflation rates of the us as something which one has to watch out for 7 7 1/2 percent inflation in the us is something probably this generation there has not seen so how that country deals with it will be something which we have to clearly keep an eye on please remember the world uh, uh, trades in dollars so you cannot uh, uh, you know dissociate from that impact so when you look at these two uh, a, a, a sort of impacts on on your broad economy the inflation will be impacted there is no doubt or debate on that how the central bank handles is something which we have to uh, watch out for i think the entire pandemic period the central bank has really stepped up and 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 handled our economy very well uh, we are a cash rich economy we are no longer a poor economy like we were earlier our balances and reserves are fairly strong and and we consume our own so so when you look at it from an india perspective we are okay but some of these factors will play out which you cannot do it is due to these factors that you get corrections like this Uh, uh, and uh, one has to really believe that you know if there is a certain reason for a correction of the market then one should look at it but these kind of events don't happen very often and people who buy uh, uh, more into these corrections in the long run tend to add that additional alpha to their overall returns so you don't see uh, you know a risk of inflow slowing down no I, on the contrary i see them going up unless this is extended for a long time and there is some real impact uh people do realize that all such events come with an end date and unless it is impacted you uh, dramatically the reversal is uh, sharp more often than not great so thank you so much for leaving us on that optimistic note <laughs> and uh, lovely having you here thank you thank so, you so much, much for having me